This episode of The Modern Rogue is brought to you by Bright Cellars. Head on over to brightcellars.com slash modernrogue and get 50% off your first box of wine. Oh, that's right, wine. So excited. <laughs> Dude, part of me is embarrassed that it's only because we have a YouTube series that we can justify going out on a Saturday morning in South Austin and doing some fishing. But at the end of the day, we get to do some fishing We're on working. a beautiful day in South Austin. And we get to meet Tyler. Thank you so much for joining us, Good man. to see you guys. Thanks for coming out. Hopefully Dude, we'll get you on some fish today. I don't even care if I see a fish. <laughs> I'm just on a boat. That's all that matters. I'm outside. <laughs> so plugs out right at the beginning. Your YouTube channel is what? Tyler's Real Fishing. And I love teaching people how to catch more fish, specifically bass. I just have a passion for teaching and of course, showing people the wonder of the outdoors. Okay, so I suppose just assume we're complete idiots. Uh -huh. I understand we are on a boat. We are on a bass boat. This is a high power technology centered bass boat and hopefully we're gonna be able to find you guys some fish today. Let's start with the first part. Once you're in the water, how mm -hmm. do you know what is a good spot and what isn't? It really depends on the body of water. You know, there's not necessarily one good spot and one bad spot. Every spot could have fish, but it just depends on the time of the year. This time of the year, we know we had that crazy winter storm, but now the, the weather's getting warmer, the water's getting warmer, the fish are once again starting to feed and get active. And so that means they're gonna be up around the shallower water. So I've never experienced any kind of boat where you didn't use just the one engine, uh -huh. but then out of the corner of my eye, you're pressing crazy Segway wheels and we're moving. <laughs> Is that so you're able to sneak up on the bass? Totally, so the big engine, the but the outboard engine, my 250 horsepower engine back there, can get this thing going 70 miles an hour on the water. This here is called the trolling motor. So once you get to your fishing spot, you drop this thing in the water and you're able to troll around a lot more quieter and slower to uh, sneak up you're on the back. able to charge fees, to cross bridges, <laughs> say deliberately hateful things, comment on YouTube, right. <laughs> engage the troll engine. <laughs> exactly, lots, uh, of, lots of trolls going I on. guess, yeah, let's go find our spot. Let's, let's jump in. I'm down. So the first thing as a bass fisherman that I do is I put on my polarized sunglasses. Oh, and so man, I always hear about how important the polarized sunglasses are. It's very are. important, especially in water like we have today, really clear water to be able to see not only the fish, but also the bottom. And it allows me to see a lot more in the water of what's down there. So I look here, we got really clear water. I mean, we're on a little private lake today. To our dumb, unpolarized eyes, uh -huh. we're seeing a lot of reflection of the sky right now. Exactly, so once you put the polarized sunglasses on, you can see what's down there, and I see a lot of green, which means a lot of grass, a lot of moss, and specifically, in this pond right now, unfortunately, a lot of slime, or as I call it, snot grass. Because if you're a fan of puns, as I am, do you guys like puns? Hey, sure. sure, yeah, it, he's, he's it, got kids. It, it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they, we call it we call it snot grass because it's, it's not grass. It's not grass. All, right, yeah. all right, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm uh, with you. But, uh, I'm gonna go sit down. <laughs> and so that can make it. <laughs> all of a sudden, cracks open. Well, the first core's light comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so snot grass can make it hard because your lures kind of get stuck around it. But it, the, the deeper you go, the less of that you're gonna find. So got it. we got some lures for you guys. Let's troll around to find a spot yeah. and, uh, and get fishing. I'm just gonna look for, you know, what's going on under the water. And then that'll, you know, key me in on what lures to start throwing first. Oh, there's a bass right there. Look at that. You probably can't see it because you know. I, I can't. Oh, ho, yeah. there's two bass right here. Okay, look, I could just make up things too. I see a yeah, unicorn. You're making this up. Here. All right. Put all right. those on, and you might see the fish right here. Oh yeah, there they are. Yeah. You see them? I'm not making yeah. stuff up. No, they they are X-ray specs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I got an extra pair for one of you guys. I hadn't considered the prospect of uniquely identifying specific fish and say, you, I'm gonna catch you. Well, that's, we're not gonna catch those. I'm just looking around to see what depth they're in. So if the fish are way up here, I know we cast over there, but I'm seeing most of the fish out here in the middle. But now I kind of know what depth zone they're in, which allows me to stop wasting time fishing over there because I can see them right here. 
So during a tournament, is the award for you caught the most, you caught the biggest, you caught the fastest? So most tournaments go by a five fish limit format. So you catch your best five fish uh -huh. by, by pound, and they have to be 14 inches to keep. And then you keep them in what your production's sitting on back there are the live wells, which has recirculating water, and you weigh them in at the end of the day and then release them alive. So it's all catch and release in tournaments. And as you're going really? through, uh -huh. like do you replace, you catch a sixth one and throw out the smallest one? Exactly, that's called culling. Of course, if you have five one pounders and you catch a three, you take one of the ones out and you throw it out and you back in the water and you replace it with the three pounder. Now, what is it about bass that make them so magical? Because I every time I turn on nature television, it's always bass. Uh huh. You know, there's something about accessibility. And anywhere around the country, even around the world, the largemouth bass seems to be one of the most accessible fish to catch. I don't care if you're in a pond, a lake, river, stream, or, you know, there's bass in every type of body of water out there besides salt water. Do we like this spot? I like this spot right here. I like us casting out this direction. We got, this is a beautiful day, guys. Yeah, I, I you, love this. You're not kidding. And so I got two rods for you guys in here. Now there's, uh, I'm assuming that y'all's fishing experience <laughs> is low. I could be wrong yeah. and, I, and I apologize. <laughs> this is the bait casting rod. Okay. This is the spinning rod. Spinning rod is, is generally for your more beginner angler. It's less hard to screw up. So give, I like it already. I'm gonna give these to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be throwing this one around. We're gonna throw two different lures that kind of target the same fish, but in two different ways. The simplest version of fishing I always think of is you put actual bait, whether mm -hmm. it's another dead fish or a worm or actual food on there. But I guess like, does it work even better to have a weird flappy <laughs> fake worm? That is a really good question. So that, that's the argument, live bait versus artificial. In tournaments, we're not allowed to use live bait. And Got so it. I just always use artificial just because uh, I'm used to it. And I found that it enhances the uh, the challenge of the sport. You know, just throwing, out, throwing a lure out there and sitting and waiting, at least in my opinion, isn't very fun. I love the experience of being able to target those fish and, and have a challenge to it. So this is called a wacky worm. Okay. It kind of looks wacky. Yeah. Keep Austin weird. It's very say. wacky. Yeah, it's a very Austin-centered worm. It's wacky. This uh, one here, you're just gonna cast out there, and I have no it's, clue. It's made of CBD oil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I have no clue what this represents, to be honest. There's no worm that looks like this, but fish are stupid. But it does seem that they're attracted to shiny, wiggly things they in general. Are. Yes, and so this is a bigger, shinier, wiggly thing. But I don't see a big old fat hook. Oh, I guess it, I guess it's there. The it's yeah, just the looped right around. There. So yeah, yeah, we actually got a, a weed guard. So technically, if I rub my finger like this, the weeds are not going to get on it. If the fish bites it, it pushes that down and the, oh, hook, okay. the hook is exposed. So when you're fishing around weeds like this, you want to make sure that your hook is, is weedless of some kind. So why would you pick this one? So the reason why I picked this wobbly one is because the water is clear. And so I want something that's going to fall a little bit slower. And because this is a you know horizontal presentation, it falls slower in the water than a different one like the one over here. When water's clear, fish use more of their sight to feed. When water's dirty, they use more of their, their lateral line, which is a line on the side that they use for vibration sensing. That you want lures that make more vibration and flash. Like one of those spinner ones. Exactly. Or... But the water's clear today, so we're not gonna be throwing lures like that. So you Great. want more lures that look quote unquote natural in the water. And right. so we're gonna give one of you guys this one. Help, and so you're basically, yourself, you're gonna cast it out there and then just lift it off the bottom and let it sink. Yeah, so the story we're telling is there's a wiggly worm yes. that mm -hmm. settles and then gets up and swims a little bit and settles. Like that's, a, forgive me, I'm an actor. I need my motivation, my role. Yes. I need to know where I'm headed. That is exactly what we're doing. And hopefully one of those fish will uh, see it go up. And then as it starts to settle, he'll take advantage of what he thinks is a tasty meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done this on Minecraft a number of times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course go. you have. It occurs to me that uh, one of the banes of my existence as a kid was always getting hooked on something. But this little weed guard really makes me feel feel safer being around Jason Murphy. Exactly. <laughs> and so we're gonna, I'll find a way. <laughs> Jason, we're going to stick you in that corner. And Brian, you're going to step up here to All me. Right, got it. This lure here is a little bit different. So this one imitates a bluegill, which bass eat. And so this one is weedless as well. And as soon as the fish eats it, it's going to poke that hook through that area right there. This one, unlike his, where you lift it up and down, you're going to cast and immediately start reeling back to the boat. So again, back to the actor analogy, my character's motivation is I'm swimming constantly. So not a lot of herky jerky Jerky, just oh, no. just a cool fish swimming. Exactly. This one will be a little easier to feel the bite because you know you'll feel nothing and then all of a sudden you'll feel something. Yeah. His, I'm gonna have to teach him a little bit of how to how to feel what that fish feels like down when, there. When we do encounter the bite, the kid in me just wants to yank immediately, uh -huh. but I'm guessing that's not a great idea. So you do want to yank, but the problem is I see a lot of people yank and then they go down, yank again, yank again. There's no need for that. After you set the hook one time, you just consistently reel and hopefully that fish fights hard enough to get that hook in there strong and uh, you'll get that fish back in the boat. So let me, let's go over casting real quick. Yeah, to, uh, I think that's an important one. <laughs> what you want to do is you want to have the bait about 
I don't know, foot and a half, two feet from the tip of the rod. Gotcha. You're going to want to get where the, the line coming off the bale here is parallel with the rod. Okay. And you're gonna wanna grab it with your pointer finger, just like oh, this. All right. Then flip open that bale. And then it's as easy as over and let go as soon as you get to the top. And just like that, you have a nice long cast. So once you've made that cast, then you click it over with your hand and then you can start like this, like I said, lifting it up and then reeling in that slack that you just created by lifting it up. Let it sink for two to three seconds, lift it up again, very slowly like that. And eventually you'll go to lift up and there'll be something there. So when you feel something, you're going to not jerk, you're going to reel down and then jerk like that. Okay. Because you want the most power into that fish as possible. I got you. And if you're already at the top here and you feel a bite and you set the hook, Oop. yeah, it, oh, something like, that. something like that's going to happen. There you go. So that is the one for you. I've got right some there. unorthodox style, some <laughs> techniques. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, let, let, me like, see, uh, let me see your first cast before I learn. <laughs> grab it with your finger. Okay. Now flip it over. And flip then perfect. Now back and forth. Okay, this back and uh -huh. forth. And yep. let go on your, on your front. <laughs> you let it good. go, viewers. You, you let it go too late. That yep. was the yep. that was your issue. So now flip it over with your hand. Okay. There you go. And now reel that in. Get it to about the right place, and look at the look at the bail to make sure it lines up a little bit too far. There you go. Perfect. Grab it with your finger. Okay. Flip, flip it, it over. Just use two hands. Put your left hand on the bottom here. Okay. And just kind of use it as a pendulum. Okay. And let go right at the top. Hey hey. There we go. A little bit high, but it still got where it was going. Okay. And so right. now, of course, you use your left hand again. I mean, you, you could do that, but that could damage the reel. So oh, just okay, use, don't do that. And right. now reel in, and you got a bunch of line out, so you can reel a little faster than that. Remember your character, man. You're hopping up, you're descending down. You're hopping up, you're descending down. You're a mysterious alien. All right, so now you got all worm. your slack reeled in. Now lift it up, the worm. Good. Now let it sink and reel in that slack you just made, and then lift it up again. And you got it. Now you're going to get a bite and we're going to show you how to do it. So now for you, All right. you're going to cast out there like he did. Yep. But you're going to start reeling right away with your rod tip down. See, he has his rod tip up. Yep. You want your rod tip down just like this. You're going to feel a bite. I think we are ready to start catching some fish. All right, I'm ready. We're going to start moving Feeling. down this middle area here. We had some deeper water here and then shallow. I'm guessing it gets deeper around the corner. So okay. that's the cool thing about bass fishing is that it's an action oriented sport. So you can keep fishing, keep moving. So keep it at low, keep it at steady. Exactly. Just a cool, regular fish. Nothing to see here, <laughs> officer. Sure hope there are no largemouth bass around. Do you scare away the fish when you do that? No, there's a lot of myths about fishing. You know, bananas in the boat, that's a myth. What? Yeah. I feel like you're messing with us. No, I'm not. <laughs> cat. Oh no! You bought bring your bananas? Cat, no. Bananas are bad luck. So you bring a banana in the boat and you're not gonna catch squat. But huh. I have seen ve many videos disproving that and bananas are one of my favorite. What if, what if you wear uh, sunscreen with the word banana in it? I think you're good to go. Okay. Another one of the myths, so unless the, you know, you're fishing super close to the boat, being loud is not gonna, not gonna be an issue for these fish. Really? Really, yeah. Yep, whoops. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I got too clever by half. Fishing is a learning process. I've been fishing a few times with uh, my father-in-law. I'm surprised at how much of fishing is a lot like gambling. There's okay. something about that random reinforcement. Mm -hmm. Like every cast might be the scratch off lottery ticket that you've been waiting for. Yes, that is definitely true. Especially tournament fishing, because you are putting money on the line. <laughs> yeah, literal. In the attempt to uh, to catch more fish than your buddy. And uh, I think there's a lot, a lot of addiction to that. That's why we do it, because we are addicted to the thought of catching a fish. <laughs> we need a label that says, warning, fishing can be highly addictive. Exactly. That, that sounds like a, a bumper sticker you'd see at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> No! Okay, what did I do wrong here? Well, you, uh, you got a little tangle tangle up there. Okay. Let me fix you here. And you've been, you've been letting go a little bit too high. Try to let go a little bit more direct. Okay, then that'll give me uh, uh, more distance. Oh, yeah. Good grief. There you go. Hey, man. I'm in character. Uh-huh. Central casting. We just need a fish that doesn't care. Privileged fish. Oh, yes. A fish <laughs> that, that that's thinks the Texas world <laughs> owes him something. <laughs> Tyler, what's, what's the weirdest thing you've hooked? I mean, I have not hooked as the cartoon show uh, boot. Yeah. I have not hooked as <laughs> everybody thinks of <laughs> that. A license plate. I've hooked a lot of socks. Uh, socks? I've hooked a lot of socks. I've hooked some uh, skimpy underwear. <laughs> some I mean, sexy I, underwear? I have, I have hooked a lot of weird things. Uh, you'd be surprised what people leave at the bottom of the lake. 
Ooh, that one felt good. That was a good cast right there, my hey. friend. Hey, Dad said I did good. The cool thing about, about fishing is that there's a lot of really great conversations that get to be had yeah. on, on the boat and on long drives places. So you'd be surprised the amount of deep life conversations you get with your buddies when you're on the water. You think you're just going to be catching fish, but if oftentimes... If you've got something you want to ask, Tyler, <laughs> just, uh, just go ahead. Sometimes you catch wisdom. Yes. Yeah, I can see how this gets addictive. Especially when you catch one. You're, you're, you're addicted to you ain't even caught one yet. I'm just expecting this is as good as it's going to get for me. <laughs> I'm watching my thing. It's Here. all wiggly. I just thought I'd share that. Oh, well, thank you. What about time of day? Are bass hungry all day? So that, that's the other thing. Depending on the time of the year and the bass life cycle, the fish are going to bite better at different times of the day. So here in Texas, as you know, it gets hot. Yeah. And so in the summer, they're not going to bite at 2 p.m. Got it. You, you can still find biting fish. They're all they, taking their siestas. Exactly, really? yeah. Most of your good fishing in the summer is going to be between sunrise and, you know, 8 a.m. And then there's a good bite in the evening as well. But in the spring and fall, fish can really bite all day long. Weather conditions have a lot to do with it. So today we got sunny skies and a little bit of wind. The worst days are bright sun and zero wind at all because then the fish can see you. Oh, that's wild. I wouldn't have thought about huh. that. And so the, the so, oh my gosh. No, giant, you didn't. Giant, Look giant, at that. No. Look at that. Giant, giant. Oh. Giant. Wow. Giant. Okay, yep. Uh, what do we do? We uh, cheer. You cheer. Do you want me to fight him? No, I got him. I'll punch him. That's a big one. Uh, uh, scales, fins, lots of bass. <sighs> you just kicked that fish's ass. Holy cow. Look at that. <laughs> Wow! That right there is what we are going for today. Wow! This is a, a fairly good catch for this size lake. I mean, yeah, this, this is probably a four pounder here. He got big old bug eyes, as you can see. And he ate that swim bait. It was so cool in this clear water. I, I watched him eat it. That's awesome. And he well, barely hooked. The hook popped right out. And wow. that is a, that's a beautiful fish right there. That's amazing. I know. I really thought it was going to be me. I thought it was going to be the first one. <laughs> you getting hooked? <laughs> you just yeah, exactly. pulling on the line? <laughs> now we're going to put this fish in the live well, which is a freshwater aeration system. And now he is, uh, he's good to go to hang out for the day. In a tournament, you would have your fishes judge and then throw them all back in? Exactly. Yeah. So you have them judge at the end of the day. So today, we might do our best five today. Who knows? Yeah. We'll see. We got to get started. I think so. <laughs> I feel like the gauntlet has been thrown. <laughs> Yep, that was a good start. You uh, your bail was not open. Was not. There that was go. cool. Another one, big one. No way. What? No yep. way. Bigger, bigger fish. No way. Yeah, really. What are you doing? Bigger. Oh my gosh, guys. This what? is. What? Holy cow. I'm, I'm not joking you when I say this is big. This is not just for the cameras. Like, this I is. I see a, it. This it's is a big fish. Can... Oh my gosh. Wow. Holy cow. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Wow! All right, look. I'm not a, I'm not a We're no longer impressed. Right now. now, now it's a contest. <laughs> oh, this is cool, guys. I feel this like is... I should just kind of throw the whole thing into the water. Huh? Like <laughs> just the rod. The whole and rod. Everything. You know what? Double your chances. That right there <laughs> Holy is a cow. good. That's a good bass right there. Look at that thing, Brian. Uh, yes, it's very big. It's very impressive. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to fishing. This is fun. Yeah, this is, this is great. <laughs> you, you know, we have a golden thing. play button. I'm just saying. I've got a sonar wow. play button. That's, that's how you know <laughs> that I'm very, flex. I'm very intimidated. So you, <laughs> you might have a golden play button, but I've got a silver play button and two fish. <laughs> <laughs> you win. It does. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a fun day. Let's get you guys on some fish. Yeah. I'm also, though, going to adjust what you are throwing, Jason. Oh, okay. Because I'm throwing a similar lure to what Brian's doing, and I've caught two fish. And so, when you see your buddy catching fish, you switch, you switch. Figure out what he's doing. Exactly. Do fish ever figure out like, hey, it seems like a lot of us are vanishing. What do you mean? Like, do, do they ever figure out like, hey, everybody, maybe don't eat for a few minutes because we, <laughs> we all keep disappearing. Sometimes you find us, they actually, I don't, I don't know the science. I'm just kind of spewing things out of my rear. Uh, but I have heard that fish can release some kind of hormone mm. to, the, to the surrounding area, which causes fish to not uh, bite anymore. Interesting. In a lake like this, though, the fish are not schooled up. They're not together. They're all kind of, you know, sp spread around. And so I don't think that's going to be an issue. How is this lure different? 
So this lure here is different because it's similar to the one that I was catching fish on. So it is one that you reel through the water column instead of try to lift it off the bottom. Obviously the fish are in a, a feeding mood, a chasing mood. They're willing to chase something down and eat it. And so I want you guys to have the best chance of catching fish. Okay. So I put on one just like this. It has a little blade on it for a little bit of flash because in the wind you, you might sometimes want a little bit of flash to get the fish's attention. And then uh, a boot tail that kind of paddles as it swims. Okay. And it is a weedless presentation much like he has. So hopefully with enough of these things swimming around we'll intercept some fish like I've been able to. Okay. Look at that. Cowabunga. Hey, there we go. There is certainly a zen to this, right? Oh, that, that, that's more the fly fishing scene. You know, being in the, in the creek with your waders on and you know, slowly casting your fly. Bass fishing is a little more intense. Is bass fishing a little more social compared to fly fishing? Oh, for sure. Yeah, guys, when guys on the water and bass fishing, they'll, they'll pull up next to each other and shoot the breeze for a while. Fly fishing guys are, are a little more high class, a little less talkative usually. Those are the guys, not no offense to them, that usually believe in all the uh, all the conspiracies. So if you get a nibble, you want to kind of yank away like, like, ah, I'm afraid of you, and then let them bite and then... It's less of I'm afraid of you, it's more of a I'm asserting my dominance. Got um, it. Like, imagine that, that your lure is swimming through his house, because a fish lived down there, so we're in the house right now. And you're going to yank that fish out of his kitchen, through the hallway, and out his front door, and in the boat. So he's, he's not gonna wanna come without a fight. You're gonna wanna have to, have to get him out of where he lives. And the cool thing about being on a lake like this with private water fishing is that, you know, we get the whole lake to ourselves. Nobody else out here to, to steal our fish, to take our spots. And so that's what I love about being able to get out here. And one thing that happened during 2020 is that a lot of people, they're gonna go out fishing. Yeah. And fishing is a relatively inexpensive sport. Now, at this level, it's not. But for the, for the average person, just going out catching a fish, it is. And so a lot of people went out there and lakes got more pressure, which means they got a lot more the fish, saw a lot more lures, which made fishing a little harder. So fishing on a private lake like this, uh, it might come at a, at a small cost, but you are allowed to fish for fish that haven't seen as many lures. Do people get weird about like the type of lures and everything? like? superstitions and oh, there's, there's switching them up all the time. Colors is one of the things that people are oftentimes very superstitious on. They think that, you know, if it's green with a little bit of purple, that's not gonna work. But if it's green with a little bit of red, that's gonna work. And I, I don't really buy into that. I think if the fish is hungry and it looks generally okay, they're probably gonna eat it, is my, is my thought. I got a little excited. Oh, I was wondering what happened. <laughs> I got a little excited, I thought I had one. And instead I, I think I nearly Hey, one thing we Brent. say is that hook sets are free. <laughs> so it doesn't cost you anything to check if that was a fish. Honestly, one of my biggest superstitions that I believe, more of a mental you know, attitude, is positivity. I see so many people out there that think they're not going to catch them, and they don't catch them. And I'm not oh. saying that, oh, you got one? Yeah. See, were you thinking positive thoughts? I yeah. was, I was. Let's, let's you literally just said the word positive and that's all it took. I'm not saying that the fish, you know, know about positivity, but I'm telling you it doesn't well, hurt. Cer certainly, yeah, I lost it. if you're feeling positive, you're, you're casting more often because you're convinced it's just around the corner, right? You got to believe the next cast is one that you're going to catch the big one. I've had many tournaments and fishing days where the last cast of the day is when I caught my best one. Wait, so. that's the addictive quality, it right? Really it, it really is true that the last one might be the big one. Mm -hmm. And I've got anecdotal evidence and stories to prove that. It's like when I'm playing Call of Duty and it's like, Okay, one more and we'll get a positive kill-death ratio. <laughs> Just one more round. Yeah. There was a big one up here. He might have been on a bed. So we're in the springtime of the year, the bass mate. And so the male and a female bass will get together and they will do their thing on, on what they call a bed, which is a little white space they clear out to lay the eggs. Uh -huh. And I think I might have seen a big one, but the problem is we're a little too early. Give it a few days, these fish are going to be doing that. I've noticed that you should listen to see if they're playing a Pandora station. Yes. Yeah. If the music is going and the lights are low. <laughs> I'm trying to sneak up on this fish. This fish might be on a bed. I think I keep seeing it swim back and forth across it. Hitting the snooze button. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't want to get out of bed quite yet. There is sort of a, a twofer where it's like, on the one hand, you hope to catch a fish, but also feels real good when you get a cast right. Exactly. All right, now I have confirmed this fish is on a bed. So we have a fish that I can see. The fish looks like it's gonna stay, which means it's probably catchable. Now the, the deal with this is that these fish oftentimes will bite and let go real quick. And so you've gotta be, uh, you gotta be on your A game to, okay. get, to get these guys. So again, 
little practice for you. Uh, you want to hop it, and then when I tell you to set the hook, you reel down and go yank. Like, Got it. Reel dang hard and keep it pinned. Got it. And reel. You don't want to, so like if fish starts taking a hard run, you don't want to reel against him because you can break the line. So kind of let him take that drag. Got but it. as soon as you feel that you are in control, that's when you can start reeling again. I kind of want you to be able to see. Where are the sunglasses go that you were wearing? Right here. Oh, you got them right here? Yeah. I think you're going to be able to see this fish right here. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, that makes a considerable difference. Do you see these, that, this white spot in front of this, these yes. trees? Oh, you can see them right now. Yep. That's I see him. Them. Okay. Oh, good. Now reel. I'm going to reel right past him. Yep. Wow. See Seeing the, fish? the prey right there. Uh -huh. Yeah. That changes things. It does. Oh, ha, you had a bite there, <laughs> Jason. I did? Yeah, your lure's missing its tail. That's what I thought. <laughs> I thought it had a little thing on the bottom, right? It did. Not anymore. I'll yeah. get you I'll get you a new one here in a second once we get your your co-host here on a fish. You see him oh, moving. So he's getting he's getting real close. Getting, getting territorial. Perfect. That's the one. Reel it. All right. And I'll tell you when to stop it. Stop. Let us sit there. Let us sit there. See he turn around? Yep. Hop it once. Oh, see him? He's chasing, he's chasing it. I feel, I, I oh. see it, I feel it. Oh, mocking me. Okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. This is fundamentally different. Like, like actually knowing he's right there and uh -huh. I can see the sucker. Oh, again, good cast. Okay. Oh, he's looking at it. Got him, got him. Yep, yes. yep, 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 yep. Wow, okay, wow. okay. So just keep it, keep, keep it, it tight, keep let it him tight. run. Yes. So the idea is we want to let him wear himself out here. Exactly. Oh, he's giving a good tug. He is. Look at that. I keep running, bring, bring oh, him sorry, back. Sorry, 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 sorry. Here we go, here we go. Ah. <laughs> oh. Hey, hey. That is awesome. Give me some of that. Wow, look at Give that. Give me some. Nice. That right there is your first fish, and you can see he's peeing, yep, which means yep. he's mating. Oh, got so it. So we're going to get the hook out. Oh, he wasn't hooked by much. Yeah, he no, barely, out, just barely like that. snagged him. And uh, hopefully he stops peeing soon. Thank you, buddy. Let's uh, teach you how to hold the bass properly. Okay, yeah, yeah. What am I doing? So what you're gonna see is you got teeth down here that are kind of sandpaper, and right. teeth up here that are kind of sandpaper. You're gonna to wanna to stick your thumb perpendicular, okay. and your pointer underneath, and twist it like that. Got it. That's how you're gonna hold it. Got it, so, so it presents nice, there we go, like this. Right there, get your thumb in that soft area. Uh, in the soft area, there, there go. we go. Yes! Look at that guy. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> oh, that's fish. Heck yeah. Here you go, buddy. You'll be out soon. Is it like lightning striking now that we are successful here? Do we stay here or do we go somewhere else? Well, that was a specific fish that lived right there. Right. We're gonna keep going and hopefully find more of those fish. But like I said, I think there's more fish in this general deeper area than there are up here. That fish was, I think, one of the first fish to get on beds this year. So we caught, caught one of the early ones. That's I'm great. gonna say there aren't any, actually, out here. <laughs> I've uh, been doing research. Yeah. We're, we're gonna see if we can prove you wrong. We're pretty well determined that. Nice. We got a giant on a bed. Oh yeah? Yep, we got an even bigger one. Oh yeah, you're gonna catch this fish, man. This, all right, is, this uh, is all you, Jason. This is all you, homie. I feel like I might have to make her mad first. Like, say harsh things to her? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At this time of the year, it's less about her being hungry, more about her being- Defensive? Defensive and angry. Doing this in Animal Crossing is way easier. <laughs> <laughs> Hop it. And let it sink. Oh, perfect, perfect. Just let it sit there. She's got to reposition her body to be able to see it. You got her. Yep. You got her. Oh! You got to oh! you, you set, set the hook. I got to set the hook. Okay. Uh, You're almost there. You're almost there. Almost, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. That's very crucial part yeah. of this gig. Yeah. Okay. Now reel a little bit. Let it sit. Reel it. She got it. Yes. 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 Yeah. Good. 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 Keep the tension on. That's a big one. That's a big one, man. Nice job. Come on. Come on. Oh my God, it's a beast. Oh my God, that's a huge one. Oh, she's wow. kind of giving up. She's giving up, bring her in, bring her in, bring her in. Yes. Look at that. Ah. Give wow. me some of that. Oh. Give me some of that. I Look feel victorious. That fish right there. Oh. That's cool. That right there is a Look good at that. fish. You that's that? huge. That might you, be the catch of the day. Uh, well. No, you did. I had some help. That is awesome. Set your hook. Again, That's we're gonna, yeah. <laughs> let's put, put your rod down and we'll get you holding this one oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, remember, you're gonna wanna put your thumb in that area right there, and yep. then you, all your fingers behind that little crimp there. You got it? Yep. Yes! Yeah! That right there is a good Texas bass. I think we're close to declaring victory here. Hey, calm down in there. <laughs> So I'm rigging up a lure that's white. And the reason for that is not because it imitates a minnow of any kind, but it makes it very easy to see when a bass eats your lure. So if I'm bed fishing, like we are today, watching the fish eat it, I can actually see when my lure disappears and there's no doubt in my mind if he's got it in his mouth. 
Okay, fishing idiot question. Uh-huh. Bobbers. Bobbers are for live bait. For lures like this, you have to impart the action yourself with your okay. reel and with your rod. If you're casting something like that out there with a bobber, it's just gonna sit there. It works great with a worm, an actual worm or a minnow or something like that because- Actual food? Actual food, because they move. Yeah. And so your bobber allows it to stay in that depth zone the fish are at. Okay. With this, you have to do the work yourself. So bobbers are basically worthless for what we do. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Now, that's not a bad question. That's a great question. I like to do a little less grandpa, you know, what we call <laughs> papa style biggin. Biggin. Oh, did you already get one? Yep. You already got yeah. one on your first cast? This, this is huge, guys. This what is big. What are you doing? This is big. How do you? This is you, big. It doesn't seem talking. like we're doing much this difference. This is big. This is big. Look at move, that. Move, yeah, move, yeah, move, yeah, move, I'm move, out of your way. I'm out of your way. Ah, I've not caught a bass this big in a long time. Wow. Like I said, a little less pawpaw style for me. I like to be, you know, going at these fish. Oh, you, oh. you were in the middle oh my of gosh. mid flex, too. I was, I was. Should, should we how? Uh, should we call her curses at him? Wow! Oh, wow! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, man. You were just talking. It's a beast. Uh, meanwhile, I'm focusing all of my chi yeah, yeah, yeah. on summoning the fish to the hook. That's amazing. That's the biggest one we got all day, That's right? That's the biggest one. That's a six, seven pounder right there. Wow. That is a big, big bass. So what made you know to cast that direction? Well, I just know that we've caught several nice fish in this area of the, yeah. of the, of the lake. And so I just made a cast to some good looking area over here. And obviously one was sitting there. That's amazing. That is very, very cool. We're going to get that hook out and we're going to put this guy in the live well. And now we got five. We got five. We, we got just five. got our limit. That's like awesome. This. Let's go. Dude, nice. Fist yeah, all absolutely. Around. This is where you start to feel that, yeah, but maybe just one more cast. Oh, <laughs> right? totally. <laughs> yeah. Even on the best days fishing, you never want to get off the water, ever. What we had today is perfect storm. We have great conditions for springtime bass fishing. The bass are, are doing their thing up shallow. They're mating, which makes them really easy to catch. And we got you guys on some fish. I yeah. See that, that's a success right there. All the, right, you want to call it afternoon. one more cast each and then we call it a day? Let's do it. All right. By one more cast means I know we're each going to do at least five more. Of course. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking and about. And you can't catch one on your last cast because that, that can't be your last well, that cast. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> if you catch one right now, you we all have to make one more. <laughs> okay. That wasn't the best cast you made all day, but it got there. It got, yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. I've done better today. Well, here, if you're reeling that in, I'll just kill time <laughs> with just one more cast. <laughs> there we go. Oh, man, I mean... You just made one, so. Oh, I mean, it's okay, yeah. That makes I might sense. as well make that another one. I feel like this is the end of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> now's a good time. Uh, what, pl more. what plugs do you got for us? Exactly. I mean, just if people want to learn how to bass fish, you know, I think I've proven myself today that, you know, getting you guys on some fish, I love teaching people how. So they can find me anywhere on social media and YouTube, Instagram at Tyler's Real Fishing. Just super grateful to be out here with you guys. And Dude, yeah, you're a, a champion. I mean, you've. We got uh, five fish. Tyler flexed hard, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, I'm just glad that we got you guys some fish, and that's a new PB, personal best for you for sure. Yeah. Is that a new personal uh, oh, yeah, best for you? Yeah, 100%. Are you kidding no. me? Let's go. Look, let's go home winners. Okay. I think that's lifetime best, yeah. actually. That's awesome. Didn't even snag either of us. Nobody took a hook to the face. Uh, no. Hey. Corey Cranfield, I assume this is not rocket science. I mean, unless you were to distill it down to the ethanol and use that to propel a rocket. The important thing about bright sellers is that they don't make you feel like a chump. Yeah, you actually go online and take a quiz and depending on how you answer the questions, like what kind of chocolate do you like or what kind of orange juice do you yeah, like? Yeah, hold on. Those don't sound like wine snobby yeah, exactly, questions. Exactly. So they're trying to figure out what's the best wine for you. And then you and they show get up. them. Okay, yeah. all right. So so I assume you took the quiz on our I behalf. Did. I did. And I, I aced it. Yeah. 100%. You know how I know? Because <laughs> wow. they sent us a box of wines. <laughs> I aced that test. All right, here we go. Ooh, tasty. I, I don't know what these are. This is them educating us on the wine. Oh, God. That's one of the things I love. When we've talked to so many experts, and they all say the same thing. They're like, just don't be pretentious. Mm -hmm. Be honest. Come with an open mind, and everybody will treat you right. And it seems like they embody the spirit of that. Yeah, they get it. They get it. Okay, so we have six bottles. Yes. Okay, here's my favorite part, is my first question is like, well, what are they? What, what, and I realize I'm holding the cards. You have all the answers. Say, Here, tell me about Mojave Rain. Ooh, I like this one, 14.5% alcohol. Okay, okay yes. <laughs> Brimming with dark fruit aromas of juicy plums. Plums, raspberry, black cherry, and chocolate. Ooh, I like this one. I love a Merlot. I like Malbecs okay. in general. Right, so this that. is, uh, Obscura is a 2018 Malbec. 
Yes, come on. This is a Bond villain if it was ever a wine. Now, where'd you put that bottle? Oh, here it is. It was Obscura of my vision. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, yeah, you know what? Apparently it. I do know. And what I like is that you get to rate it and sort of keep a running track record of what you like and how it compares to your friends. Oh, it smells delightful. This is the closest mm. to going on a date that my wife will allow. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, huh? <laughs> To Bright Cellars? Indeed. Ooh, yes. Mm. I like that robust, uh, that robust aroma. I got, I, I love reds. Ooh, yeah. I definitely pick up the blueberries. Everybody at home, if you're looking for an easy gift to give, if you're looking for something to treat yourself, doesn't have to be wine fancy. There's no snobbery happening. Head on over to brightsellers.com/modernrogue. Get 50% off your first box of six bottles of wine. Yes, indeed. And in uh, sunset not guaranteed. Tasty wine is though. Hmm. Good point. Actually, we probably should have led with that. That's the better. <laughs> That's Tasty the wine guaranteed. Indeed. Sunset, maybe. <laughs> Offer and link in the description below. You know, here in Texas, nothing quite says coffee and beer like electronics from the Nintendo Corporation. Take it from me, noted Texas fisherman, and the guy who just caught this weed. Weed, it's good for Texas, it's good for America. <laughs> Brought to you by Nintendo.